Controversy in sports, they always find companionship. And the latest in that chapter is one that has gripped the sport of wrestling. Indian wrestlers have been making all the headlines for months now. It was not for medals though, or any competitions or winning tournaments. The last many months have been about the protests that many wrestlers in India have staged against the Federation. This of course grabbed all the headlines that even got the sports ministry involved. The world body went ahead and even suspended the WFI or the Wrestling Federation of India. There has been a lot of turmoil that has plagued this sport ever since. And the result of that was of course seen yesterday. One of the key faces in this campaign, this fight between the wrestlers and the federation, by that extension, the system itself has been Bajrang Punya. The same feisty Bajrang Punya who won bronze at the Tokyo Olympics, who has won India gold at the Commonwealth Games and the Asian Games. He has been one of the most inspirational champions, the face of wrestling. He was a picture of gloom and utter helplessness. It's interesting because it's his WhatsApp DP says, champions in tears and I stand for wrestling. And as he crashed out of the Paris Olympics qualification selection trials in the 65 kg category, he was in tears. Not just him though, Ravi Dahiya as well, a silver medalist at the Tokyo Olympics and one of the most promising talents also bowed out. Bajrang Punya was in tears after the loss to Rohit Kumar. It was in the semi-finals as we've said and the loss was massive. It was 9-1, that was the scoreline. The image I will remember is Ravi Kumar touching Bajrang Punya's feet multiple times after the loss, almost out of embarrassment. And of course, there's some respect there as well of having beaten him so convincingly. It was a bout and it was an important one to seal a spot in the Paris Olympics. Bajrang Punya was heartbroken. He was upset and in a bit of a shock. So much so that he rushed out of the stadium. After losing the bout, he refused to give his samples to testing. It's a procedure. You have to provide your samples to NARA, the National Anti-Doping Agency, for running them through the dope test and also refused to play his bronze medal clash. Bajrang Punya is a monster on the mat. All these young wrestlers look up to him, including the one when he, who beat him. At 30, he has inspired so many to take up wrestling. He's pretty much the big brother. The way he crumbled in that contest, it was clear. Bajrang Punya was a shadow of his earlier self. The wrestler who won medals, who muscled his way to glory across different tournaments, was shades away from what we've seen him perform at. There are many questions being raised now about what went wrong. How could one of the biggest medal hopes for India in wrestling at the Olympics lose to someone far more inexperienced to him, far younger than him? in the trials no less, and in the manner in which he did. Many even saying that Bajrang Punya was spending far more time fighting the fight off the mat rather than preparing for the battles that lie ahead on the mat. Yes, the protests took a long time. It was months away from any form of competition or any training that any of these wrestlers did. They chose to fight the system and as everyone knows, these things take time. Change of any kind takes time. I feel there are more questions here that are being raised or that I will raise than answers themselves. Should he have abandoned this fight, the protest, his conscience that he was believing in, the fight itself with his friends in the wrestling world, his co-wrestlers in this protest and focused on his career instead, on his bouts, on his preparation. Because let's face it, the career is now on the line. His career is on the line. That's what athletes dream of, to win for the country, to win medals for their country. But the choice is difficult here because of all that I mentioned just before. Striking a balance for, uh, between fighting what you believe in and then of course fighting for your country, it's tough. And even if he chose not to, did he give himself enough time to recalibrate his own level, his fitness and his abilities before entering the trials? Let's give you the facts too. It's not just him who lost out on an Olympic qualification. Ravi Dahiya, like we mentioned, has missed out too. Another promising hopeful, another Olympic medalist as well. Is the question, question then just about Bajrang Punya's inabilities to combat and forego his main aim, which is to win medals and protest instead? Or is the larger question what has happened to some of the most promising wrestlers? For any athlete, it's not just the physical well-being that matters. The mind is just as invested and important in a sport. Many of these wrestlers have been caught in the middle of this face-off that has clearly been taking too much time and has been taking center stage instead. So the other question is, has Bajrang Punya let us down 
or has the system itself let Bajrang Punya down? A system that is at crossroads now with the players who form the backbone. The success of any sport is when all stake stakeholders see eye to eye and work towards the betterment of the sport. Something is surely amiss. What is that exactly? I'll leave you to be a judge of it.